today. I don't think that's quite very fair. Um, if there's <laughs> young you folks in this room, then maybe you can tell your story in four to six minutes. But for those of me, I need um, a little bit more time. But I will try to <laughs> follow directions and stay within my time. December 22nd, 1965, at 8 p.m. in the evening at a hospital in Savannah, Georgia, a young lady was in labor. The doctor had the position to deliver this baby, I don't know whether he was set up like a quarterback, getting ready to take it, or, or down like a catcher. But he steps in and does not see the crown of the baby's head. He gets nervous, he gets scared. Seeing the nervousness of the doctor, the pediatrician that was in the room, stepped up and realized what was going on. The baby was in a breech position. Mm. The doctor had never delivered a breech baby before, but apparently this pediatrician had some experience at it. I think today when babies are breech, they just go ahead and do a cesarean section and, you know, easy done deal. But it's very dangerous when that baby is delivered badly. And so he steps in and into this world of me. <laughs> and I was looking up breach births and stuff and found that only three to five percent of births, babies, um, are in that position at birth. And that to me is kind of defines my life, I think, you know, that. I do things a little differently. I'm different. I, I want to think as a newborn that I thought it doesn't make sense to fall out of my head and let me step out of here. <laughs> so, like I said, that was a defining moment of my life. Uh, one question I get from a lot of that, you know, most people ask when you meet them for the first time is, where are you from? Mm. And I've always had a difficult time answering that question. So maybe after I go through this next bit, maybe some of y'all can help me tell me where I'm from. Um, like I said, I was born in Savannah, Georgia. Well, you're from Savannah. Well, no, not, not necessarily. Um, I was only in Georgia for maybe two years after I was born. Um, two years, next stop, California. That's the tip, so. Next stop, California. I was in California for 11 months. Uh, next stop, Okinawa. And then those were where my first memories in life were in that little tiny island of Okinawa. Uh, on from Okinawa and then went to Maine. Totally different climate. Um, that's where I started kindergarten in Maine. Next stop was the Philippines, back over to that hot place in Asia. Um, oh, what I neglected to say, my dad was in the Air Force, so that was the reason for all of this <laughs> traveling. So, next stop, South Dakota. I think I was in South Dakota for maybe, well, yeah, Philippines was about two years, South Dakota was about three years there. Moved on to North Carolina because my parents are from Garner in that area of the state. Stayed there for a year while they shipped my dad overseas by himself to Taiwan. Um, after he came back home, back out to the Midwest again, to Nebraska. Um, then on from there, back to North Carolina. Now, when I was in Nebraska, um, not a lot of people looked like me in some of those classrooms <laughs> really? and stuff. So I was looking forward to getting back home, getting to North Carolina, seeing people, more people that look like me with similar lights. And I get here, and what is the first thing I hear? Where are you from? <laughs> Why do you sound white? That's <laughs> what I got, you know. Um, so school was kind of kind of difficult, and the place I thought it would be easiest, you know, a lot of teasing, a lot of harassment, um, you know, change from between two rival high schools while I was there. So that experience didn't go good. So when I had the opportunity to leave the little town of Goldsboro where I live to go to college, I decided and um, came to Charlotte, 
went to UNC Charlotte, met my lovely wife. That's not, that's not a picture, that's a weird picture, not one from when I met her. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, took her eight years to decide that I was the one for her. So married in 92, had two beautiful children, and one in 96, one in 97. Oops. There they are. Two of them are that's probably about five years old or so. Um, so, and looks like I'm about to run out of I um, was able to, I didn't fit, my wife finished school, I didn't finish school at the time. And it would be 30 years later in, in July of 2015, I was at with my youngest son at orientation. And I got a phone call, and I wasn't gonna take, didn't take the phone call, let it run through voicemail, checked it on the break. And it was um, my, I got a phone call about a job interview. And when I listened to, when I called them back, they did a phone interview, and they said that, uh, you need to bring proof of your highest level of education. So I was right at UNCC. And I said, well, I don't know where my high school diploma is, but I know where um, I can go there and get a copy of my transcript. Got a copy of my transcript at the registrar's office. Lady at the name, well, this lady at the desk named Julie Burks. I gave her my social security number, and she looked at me and she said, we don't use social security numbers anymore. We use, we have student IDs, and you have one, and all your information is in our system. And I took that number and the title of this is, is The Power of Words of my presentation. And it's the words that that lady spoke to me on that day that hit me at the right time in my life that changed my life. I went on to finish college 32 years from the day that I started. I've always had difficulty standing in front of people, talking to people, or whatever. You know, I just said, just go ahead and just give me an app. I'll just, but I'm not going to do this presentation. <laughs> you know? So to see me up here, able to stand and to talk to you. Um, the next picture that I have up here was I, when I went back, when I came back to school, I was able to take a painting class. I'm finishing up a computer science. Uh, a criminal justice degree, but I was able to take painting. I took a painting class, and this is a painting that I was working on, this kind of self-portrait, and I couldn't get the tone, the color right, and my instructor came up to me, and he held my arm up to the light, and he says, I can't just take brown and mix white or black, and he said, there's much more to you than that. Mm -hmm. And that spoke to me much more is just talking about colors on the palette. Um, what I wanted to do um, initially, I, I wanted to major in art in college, but I never thought I had the talent to do that. So went with my third choice. Um, that's one of the paintings that came out of my course. Um, this is a lady in the register's office that lit that fire as we walked across the stage in December 6th, 17th. That's my degree. Um, as I was going down to get my cap and gown, I, um, you know, get, you've already paid for the cap and gown, I guess, all that's free or whatever. And I go through the line, and the lady says, he gets a cord. I said, a cord? He said, what? I, I said, um, so I go up there and she said, that was $13 for your cord. And I'm like, cord for what? She says, cum laude. I said, cum who? <laughs> <laughs> Never been on the honor roll, dean's list, nothing in my life, but that's how I was able to finish. Um, that was some of my artwork. Went on, my employer with the city recognized my talents in art and gave me some opportunities. That's another piece right there. Um, but I've been able to go to Raleigh and decorate statue down there in Raleigh for our department. I can 
transformed it and have taken it to schools um, as a presentation. I've had it in four parades. Oh. So, as difficult a time as I have talking, um, singing is a whole other issue. I don't think I'm being modest to say that I am not a good singer, but at, back in school I had the opportunity of taking a gospel choir class. And <laughs> the first semester must have went so good that the teacher invited me to come back and said you could take it as a performance class. Oh. And so this is me standing on the stage in front of several hundred people at the Roll Arts Studio in uh, at UNCC singing for Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> that, take that off my bucket list. <laughs> um, the school invited me to have dinner with the UNC president, which led to another opportunity that, um, which I was invited by the UNC administration, the, I guess it's about three months after I graduated, to speak at an adult learning conference. Ooh. And the first time that I had ever spoke in front of anybody like that before. And I said, I got to do this. And so I did. And Got paid for it as well. I can't believe that. <laughs> 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 so but in um, in my painting course, one of the first images that the instructor showed at the beginning of the, the course was a pit, was a painting by an artist Caravaggio. I'd never seen this before. It's Doubting Thomas by Caravaggio, and but it kind of struck me differently than other religious paintings and pit sculptures that I'd seen in the past. And so at the end of the semester, I just had this intense desire or feel or urge that I needed to recreate this. And so this is what I painted, painted myself there. So I have this picture on my phone so that when I start to doubt myself, pick up my phone and look at my screensaver, and it gives me motivation to know that, to, to realize what, what I've come through and where I've, I've 